Hi, I'm Bea. My channel is about mixed media, art, journaling, assemblage and anything else that sparks my interest. Hey y'all! Welcome back to the weekly budget-friendly background number 24 and the last one for the moment. Um, as I said in a previous video, I'm kind of running out of new ideas, so I decided to stop the series here. That doesn't mean I'm never gonna add backgrounds again to my channel. Don't get me wrong here, but just not as a weekly thing. And um, I have already an idea what I'm gonna do afterwards for the Monday video, so stay tuned till the end and I'll show you what I have planned for a weekly series after this weekly budget friendly background. Okay, with no further ado, let's dive in. So what you see here is uh, parchment paper with paint on it. More parchment paper. Uh, this is actually the... Um, I do have a Stay Wet palette and uh, sometimes even if you try to use up all the paint, you simply forget them. So that's what's sticking on here. That's the palette paper. That's another large um, parchment paper with paint on it. So there is two ways how you can approach this, uh, this idea. One is uh, purely leftover paints on of those uh, palette papers or instead of always putting it into an art journal which I usually do so I have a ton of art journal pages with leftover paints but hey you only can do as so much so I decided I'm gonna spread my paint onto parchment paper and the reason for that is now I can use my um, punches to make circle, for example, you could do butterflies, whatever. Um, I, I tend to stay with circles. So you can tear pieces. You can cut shapes, like I'm going to do sort of triangles now. Whatever you feel like. Or maybe with this one, I do some circles too. I grab a bigger circle just for fun. I do grab um, a flower. Why not? Just because we can. At some point, you have to cut a little bit to get to the paint because we only want to paint we don't want empty parchment paper okay let's do another one this time i only do it partially i hope you can see it and maybe over here too. So there's still parchment paper here, but there's also paint here. The thing is, it has to be completely dry before you can use your parchment paper. So that's why I did these papers yesterday. So that's enough for the moment. Now, the way I do them, it's pretty simple. It's just grabbing some paint. Whoops, a little bit enough. Let's do a green black one. I mean, if you are working and have leftover paints, then you just use what you have as leftover paints. But if you want to start from scratch, you can do your own mixtures of and then you simply spread it around so two ways 
When you are at the project and have leftover paints, grab instead of the art journal some parchment paper. Or if you want to do something specific in specific colors, maybe you have an idea for an artwork or so, just make you some papers. Both ways work. That has to dry completely before you can tear or punch out or whatever. As you can see, I have prepared some stuff already. Because again, there is a drying time involved. So now I'm going to use a Mod Podge and uh, figure out how I want to arrange the things. So what do we have? Those no longer. And by the way, the background I did first just put some colors with the uh, water soluble any medium nothing fancy it's gonna bleed when i use the mud podge but i don't care you could instead do an acrylic layer acrylic paint layer i'm gonna say it's up to you so i don't need that so how are we gonna do that it's gonna be some sort of an abstract work I have already used Mod Podge this morning uh, and uh, applied it to the page or to the thing. And now it is as simple as taking off the parchment paper and you are left just with the paint. Sometimes it's a little bit fiddly, especially if you go over the parchment paper with the Mod Podge, which you try to avoid, but sometimes it just happens. And because I want to layer on some of more of those, I have to remove the paper. Okay. I have seen this uh, technique by another artist. And um, I know her first name is Pam. I don't remember the other name, but I will have a link down below. And I thought that's that's really something we should explore too. Okay, here I went over with the mop pouch, which you try to avoid, but it's still working. Just a little bit more fiddly than necessary. So now I can layer those over here. That's my goal here. I'm gonna take off all the papers before I show you how you actually apply those blobs of color. Nope. Sometimes, depending on how your colors are, you really think there's still some parchment paper, but it wasn't. So, now it is as simple as adding more podge, or you could use gel medium. If I were to do an artwork, I probably would use a uh, gel, either matte or gloss, whatever you like. And then placing your pieces upside down, paint to the mod pouch or medium. Not this way. <laughs> Doesn't work that way. Ask me how I know. And I make sure that I have good contact with the substrate.
And I also want to see if I can grab some of those pieces. They're sometimes very dimensional. And you have to watch which side you like better. And I think I like this side better. But I don't like the thick, the heavy blob. So I think I'm going to place that right here. And this part gonna add here. So it's gonna be a sort of an abstract, not a sort, it's gonna be an abstract background, a very abstract background. can cut really small strips and arrange them. The sky is the limit. So the parchment paper is dry, I mean the paint is dry, time to lift up the parchment paper. Sometimes you lift up a little bit of the paint, but I can live with that. And sometimes you have a surprise. I was sure I have orange on the other side, but I obviously did paint over some silver paint, some orange paint, so yeah.
Okay, here I had obviously not enough mud podge on the meat, so that's gonna be lifted up. Oh well. So now before I would do anything on this surface I would add a layer of uh, medium and then do whatever artwork I want to do on this just to make sure that it really is down down so but I think it's a fun way to do another way some background and now as I said this is the last budgie friendly background for the moment I decided to switch up a little bit and what I'm gonna do we're gonna play with the book and frame and embossing powders so stay tuned we're gonna alter a book and we start with the front cover and um, I have a whole lot of uh, butterflies and insects all kind of insects collected from newspapers magazines uh, gift wrapping paper you name it and I think it is time to do something with it so it's gonna be a book about insects from butterflies to moth to mosquitoes whatever flies whatever runs across so we're gonna start with the um, front you're gonna look for a book. The size of this book is about five and a half inch, which is 14 centimeters by eight inch, which is about 20 in, uh, centimeters. And the thickness is a half an inch, which is about uh, one and a half centimeter. I look that I have a book which is sewn. Here you can see the threads. I prefer one with the threads. Stay tuned for next Monday. Hope to see you then. See you.